All right, we are back on the grind. Uh, so, first things first, someone asked in the comments of the last video, uh, what do you think of working as a lifeguard swim instructor for the summer, Justin? Is it a good job? Here's my answer. It is not a good job. Long-term wise, not a good job. I'll tell you why. First of all, you gotta take courses. These courses cost hundreds of dollars. You're gonna end up spending about 800 bucks to get all these courses done, okay? So you can get your license as a lifeguard and swim instructor. You gotta take these courses in the evenings or on the weekends. It's probably uh, 30, 40 hours total. You gotta pass an exam. It's, all, it's, like, it's like becoming a real estate agent. You need to get a license in order to work as a lifeguard swim instructor in any community pool, right? So you gotta pay lots of money. And if you know anything about licensing, whether you're a realtor or, I don't know, like a car salesman or something, something you gotta keep renewing that every year. You gotta take courses every year. You gotta, personal training is another one that I can't stand. I can't stand anything that involves renewing your license every year, taking courses every year, spending more money every year, when you have already know what you're doing. Dentists, lawyers, doctors, you all know what I'm talking about. You know, if you've done it for so long, so many years, you know what you're doing, you're in good hands. You don't need to keep getting updates every year and all that shit. So it's not a good long-term job. And here's another factor that most people don't know. Okay, so yes, there's a demand for lifeguard swim instructors at every pool, right? And there's a reason why. It's because the cost of living is so high, no one can afford to live around these community pools. All right, so they find better paying jobs. And don't get me wrong, swim instructors and lifeguards, they get paid well. They get paid like 20, 28 bucks an hour by the city. You're working for the city most likely. But the hours are shit. When you start from the bottom, you get the, the worst shifts. You get the part-time, on-call. There's a seniority. There's a hierarchy. So let's say if you've ever worked in a, like a supermarket, because I have, when you start off working at a supermarket, they give you the worst shifts, the lowest hours. And do you really want to do that for so many years? Because, again, if you want to move up in the hierarchy, it's going to take like seven, eight, nine, ten years. When I first started as a lifeguard, they, they gave me the worst part-time on-call shifts, right? It's like four hours here, four hours there. They call me like on a Saturday, hey, can you cover for this person? They got sick for four hours. There goes my Saturday. I mean you never know when your hours are coming and it's never steady work so if you're looking for something that's more secure more full-time lifeguard swim instructing is not the way to go in my opinion based on my experience so when i first started off i got the worst shifts and then the ones that were in the hierarchy they got the full-time hours but they had to work their ass off in order to get up to the top of the totem pole I mean, these are, these are senior instructors, senior lifeguards that have worked 10 plus years and they look terrible. They look so jaded, grumpy, miserable. It's like hate, the most hateful people. And this is probably like any industry that I'm describing. Anyone that's worked in a hierarchy for hours that's worked like 10 plus years, you know the look on their face. You know what I'm, these people that I'm describing. Do you want to be one of these people? I wouldn't. So that's why I left. Yeah, I worked lifeguarding for several years and then I just did my own thing. I just taught my own students. I worked as a freelancer overseas. And when I worked overseas, guess what happened? All of my swimming licenses expired when I came back. And you know what happened? I said, hey, I'm thinking of working as a lifeguard again or swim instructor here. 
the local pool. And he's like, oh, your licenses have all expired, Justin. You gotta take the courses all over again. That's what they said. So they wanted me to take the courses all over again, spend a thousand more bucks, get all this uh, bullshit out of the way. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. So do you see what I'm getting at? It's a scam. It's a complete scam. And you know what? They lure young people in on this scam because the young people are the most easily manipulated. So I was really young when I started as a lifeguard. I didn't know any better, but now I do. And if I were you, if I were, if you were to ask me, should I work as a lifeguard, become a lifeguard? No. Learn how to swim. Learn how to swim good. You can learn from my videos. You can learn from YouTube, but you don't need to become a licensed lifeguard. And you know what? A lot of, same thing with realtors. They'll probably say the same thing with dentists or anyone who's licensed. You know, 99% of people fail because they just don't stick to it. You gotta stick to it for like 10, 20 years. Do you wanna put 10, 20 years of your life invested into this? I don't. So, think about what I'm saying. It's not a good career path. That's why there's so many job vacancies and pools because they can't get enough staff. They just know, like, the cost of living is too high, the hours are shit, there's so much bureaucracy and legislation and you gotta do all these courses that are renewing and license bullshit no thank you no thank you so what should you work as instead Justin if I had to tell myself back then if I had to do it all over again I'd just work for myself become a freelancer work online start a YouTube channel start a business on your own whether it's online or helping the local community out somehow, okay? So find something that you're good at and monetize it, is what I'd say. What is this guy doing? So, find something that you're good at and monetize it, okay? You know when you're good at something, when people come up to you and say, oh, you're so good at this, okay? They keep saying it to you in your face, like, oh, Jeremy's so good with computers. Like, hey, Jeremy, can you help me with my computer problem? Uh, yeah, like, uh, friends have told me that you're so good at computers, right? People will always tell you, right? They'll tell you that you're good at something compliment you or they, they go to you for that certain thing they ask you for their help for me a lot of people ask me for help in working out all the time I have to turn down people here. like yesterday there's this kid he came up to me like hey, bro you're so good at handstands blah, 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 blah. how long have you been doing it I'm like I'm in the middle of my workout I don't have time to answer your questions I am not Google right so I had to cut him off and say oh yeah for many years oh and then he kept asking do you have any tips for his name? I'm like just do it and I just kept back my workout I mean don't interrupt me when I'm eating don't interrupt me when I'm working out you know the answer already you just gotta do it whatever that thing is you want to be a dentist you just got to go to dental school you just got to do it you want to be a firefighter you got to do this you want to be a police officer you got to do that you got to do the work do it and fail a lot of people are are seeking validation from experts right it's like i i know what they're the what they're coming from so I don't like asking people for help. I was born before Google or any of this internet shit happened. And I just figured it out using my mind. I just had to be creative. That's like thinking outside the box for most people. This young generation, these, these people these days, they, they want answers now. They want like surefire expert answer perfection 
in less than one second. And it's not going to happen. You just got to keep working on it. Grind, grind, grind. The grind does pay off. You do it every day. Somebody, someone said doing the same thing every day is definition of insanity. No, it's not. It's the definition of perfection. You do something every day. You perfect your craft. That's not insane. That's genius. That's talent and hard work combined. Where do you think I'm heading right now? I'm heading to the gym to perfect whatever I'm grinding. Okay. So, by the way, I had to stop using a K-tape, athletic tape, kinesiology tape, well, whatever you call that, because I've been getting these rashes on my skin. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got like this rash here, a rash here that I've been trying to heal for a few weeks now. So my, my uh, analysis is that I've been using this athletic tape for so long, like a couple of years now, I've been putting it on my wrists and injury areas of my body for so long that these areas, I've been stripping away my epidermis or my skin gradually over time. So it's, I've lost so much skin that it's getting to the point where it's, it's hurting and becoming a rash every time I, I take it off, I take the tape off. So I, I have, I've applied ointment and cream all over here. And uh, yeah, I just use wristbands now for the pain. But yeah, just a yeah, word of warning. If you're using uh, athletic tape long term, it's going to really wreck your skin. Especially if you have sensitive skin because it's just peeling away your skin every usage. And you're going to get rashes like me. Okay, so I got rash here rash there and it's painful it's a burning rash like I have no skin rash like I just yeah cooked not good so I'm gonna lay off the tape for a few months just let it heal and I want to talk about something that I that's been on my mind for a very long time it's bothering me it's pissing me off okay people in the gym most people in the gym are like most people in life most of them are annoying just like when you're driving most people on the road are the most annoying drivers the most dangerous reckless drivers you've ever seen right and it's getting worse every year so here's my problem I noticed that this trend in the gym or at least the gym that I go to is that nobody works alone anymore. Everyone has to train in a little group or a team. Like they got their, they own their own clique following each other around the gym. Like I'm not talking about like, okay, let's all show up at the gym and let's work out here and there. I mean, they follow each other in the bathroom. They take selfies together with their shirt off. They just goof off and yak in a circle, like in the, right in the middle of the gym, when you should be training. And this pisses me off. Right, I give you the analogy again and again, okay? You're driving on the highway, it's rush hour, it's traffic jam, and the jam is being caused by cars that are just stopped in the middle of the highway, and these people are just playing on their phones and just yakking with each other. The gym, is like a highway. You need it needs circulation, right? Everyone keeps, has to keep moving. You got to keep moving in a gym. You can't just stay still for an hour there, just yakking, because people need to use a squat rack, or people need to use a treadmill, or people need to use this or that, right? You got to keep moving. And here's I'm gonna here's what I'm gonna teach you about etiquette. When you've done a set. Move around. Don't just sit there and play with your phone. Move around, let someone else use it if you're trying to catch your breath. But please, don't just sit there and 
play with your phone. You're just pissing off everyone. We all know it. And looking down on your phone, you leave your guard open. I could just swing a hammer right on top of your head. You wouldn't notice until it's too late. Never leave your guard open out in public. You've seen the stabbings, you've seen the bombings, you've seen the crazy person that shows up in a public area and everyone screams and yells and it was too late and there's people dead on the floor because they, they left their guard open. Never leave your guard open in public. So, when I do a set and it's intense, for example, I was doing weighted dips, okay? I did my set and then I walked around. And then if anyone else needed to use it, they used it. It's that simple. Just go ahead, go ahead. I left it open for you. Okay? I'm not just hunched over, <gasps> catching my breath behind my phone. No. I walked around. I, I grabbed some water. I moved my arms. I get some mobility going. Stretch. Always stretch. If you're not, if you don't know what to do, stretch. Always stretch out your body. You have no idea how important it is to circulate that blood. Okay? That blood is congesting in that one muscle area, okay? Let it, just massage it out by stretching. Move, move your body. Don't let your heart rate go down. Up and up. It's like, it's like you wanna eat candy and then you get the crash and then you eat more candy, you get a sugar spike and then crash. Do you want that or do you just want like a steady, constant flow of energy going up and up like this, right? So don't crash. Okay? Keep moving. Let others work in. That's what I do. So yeah, like I was going back to saying, people work out in teams nowadays. Like these kids, they're just hanging around in one area. They're just sitting, playing with their phones, yakking. And then another group is in a circle, yakking, talking about school, talking about work, talking about hair perms. Like, go to a cafe, go to a mall, go to anywhere but a gym where work needs to be done. This is the same thing with like an office place. I worked in an office. I worked in an office in Korea. I know the corporate life. There's people out there, teams that just yak and get nothing done. The 1% or the 20 out of 80%, the 80-20 rule, the 20% of the people do 80% of the work. They get the results in a company that is true so I judge the intensity of a gym based on what I hear and if I hear more yakking versus grunting that means people are just lazy and just goofing off so yeah yesterday if you had no eyesight and you were just listening and I played an audio for you you would think that you are in a, like a, a mall or a caf crowded cafeteria. You don't hear any weights going up and down. Bang, pong. You don't hear any grunts. It should be just a natural silence of people working. Because when you push yourself, you're out of breath. You can't speak when you're out of breath when you've really pushed yourself. So people ask me all the time in the gym, why are you so quiet? Why don't you speak? It's because I'm out of breath. I'm pushing myself all the time. And how do I do that? H-I-I-T, high intensity interval training. I just keep going, I don't stop. <sighs> don't stop, I don't stop, I don't sit. I don't take a breather, I don't have time to chat. I'm, my body is constantly out of breath. Even when you box, you're out of breath between rounds, okay? The coach talks, you listen. You grab your sip of water, you, you regain your composure, but you're not yakking. The coach yaks to you. So, a lot of people are training in groups or teams or cliques or pairs, and they're just yakking. I, they, look, they look like, some guys look like gay couples on a date or a first date or something. That looks gay to me. When I see two guys talking and not working. When I see two guys, I think of 
I don't know, like two Russian guys like training for a boxing match. Coach yelling at his student. Push harder, push more. If you know what you're doing, there should be no talking at all. It's just you, your partner, and the job that needs to be done. And you just work at it. And you both put your head down and you grind. Otherwise, you can do it by yourself, which is what I do. I train alone all the time. Not because I want to, but there's nobody like me. I've never seen anybody like me in any gym that I've entered. I'm talking about North America, Asia. Like, if I went to perhaps train in an MMA gym where there are other MMA fighters, top level fighters, yeah, that would be my caliber. Those would be the guys that I would be training with. But all these gyms that I go to, nope. Nobody trains as hard as me. You gotta be the hardest training person in the, in the gym. You know why? Because you gotta lead. You can't scream off the top of your head every time you show up the gym. Why are you guys so lazy? Why are you guys yakking? Why are you guys standing around playing with your phones? You know what you should be doing. You should be pushing harder. You should be doing more sets. You should be doing more reps, more weights, more intensity, more intensity, more speed, more cardio. You know what I'm talking about, you fat guy. There's this fat old guy that tries to do calisthenics and he can't do calisthenics. He skips cardio every time. I watch him. I watch everybody in the gym. Whether you show up for the first time or you show up regularly, I see your patterns. This fat guy, never does cardio. He goes straight to the pull-up bar. He tries to do some monkey swings. Of course, he's not good. He's not good at the monkey swings because he's so fat. He's got a huge pot belly. It's why? Because he doesn't do cardio. He doesn't watch his diet. And what does he do between monkey swing sets? He yaks. He yaks with the people around. Oh, hey, how you doing? Nah, nah, nah. And goes into cafe mode. Like, it's now the gym has turned into his cafe where he can yak. And he looks at me all the time. He looks at me like a stalker, like a pervert. I, I catch him looking at me all the time because he wants to do what I do, but he doesn't do the work. He doesn't do his cardio. He doesn't work on getting rid of his gut and fixing his diet. And you know what? He's been doing it for so many months. He doesn't make any progress. And that's the thing. Are you improving? You got to ask yourself, are you improving? You're doing months of this, this grind that you call it on social media, you, you little kids, you broccoli haired zoomers. Oh, I'm working so hard. You, you lift up your shirt every two seconds in the gym. You pose and you think that you're making gains, but you're not. You've been the same size. You've been the same status for so many years. Again, these are things that just piss me off all the time. So. Should you work in a team? Yeah, once in a while. When I was on a wrestling team in high school, I worked out with my wrestling team. But I also worked out alone. And I learned more when I worked out alone. Because I didn't have anyone teaching me or showing me. I just learned everything using my mind, creativity, my imagination. I learned with Arnold. I went to the library when I couldn't find an answer. So oh, that's a good idea. I went now I go to YouTube to find ideas. So, okay, that's a good idea, that's a good idea. But I don't copy them word for word because you have to adapt specifically what is your own, as Bruce Lee said. Discard what is useless. Adapt what is useful. So this guy says this, this guy says that, they're all different. They come different backgrounds, they're all arguing on Twitter. Forget the argument, okay? 
have a conversation with yourself and say, what can I learn from each of these people that have different viewpoints that aren't the same? My viewpoint may be different from the other people that you watch or you learn from or you're studying from or being coached by, but you can take something from this video, what I'm saying. And what I'm saying is, you need to train alone. You're the hero. There's a reason why every movie has a one lone hero that stands up against the gang. For so long. Yeah, Avengers is fun once in a while, but it's that Tony Stark. It's that one lone hero that shows up in town and defeats the gang becomes the winner and stands on the podium and claims the gold or whatever you want to think of it as the hero's journey the one person so you need to train alone you're not going to learn anything if you work in a team or a pair or a group every time and that's what I see this is not a one time thing I'm talking about I'm talking about the same groups, the same cliques that show up at my gym every time they get nothing done, they just yak Go join a golf club. Join a bocce club. Join a a cafe or something. Something, a scrabble club or something. Something that's social. Because working out, training, it's a solo journey in my opinion. You have to train alone. And then you train with others occasionally. But Bruce Lee, he trained alone most of the time. He studied on his own. He didn't have Dan Inosanto. He wasn't holding Dan Inosanto's hand all throughout his journey he met him along the way is what I'm saying <sighs> so the weather is getting hot which is good a lot of you want are thinking of getting that beach body and if you are thinking about getting that beach body it's too late you should have started in January because it's going to take you three to six months in order to get that beach body if you want to start now. If you are overweight, if you are struggling to get in shape. But you know what the best thing is? The best thing is that you are aware. You are self-aware. You are self-enlightened. And you are willing to start a change now. And that's all it takes. Start now. I started now versus someone who started 28 days later than me, okay? You start now, you start earlier than somebody. So do it now. And if you're wondering about calisthenics, bro, how do I get into calisthenics? Just how do I get into calisthenics? Okay. Here's my answer. Start doing push-ups, pull-ups, bodyweight squats, dips. But the most important concept about calisthenics is volume, okay? You gotta get out of that mindset of four to 10 reps, okay? That's a body, that's good for bodybuilding, but not for calisthenics, okay? Calisthenics, you gotta think of it as as many reps until you are exhausted or cannot do anymore, okay? So how long is that? I don't know, 500 push-ups, 600 dips in a day. Think of it that. Just do as many as you can. Assisted on your knees, on your feet, with a resistance band, weighted, with a weighted vest, whatever it takes, whatever level you, you can challenge yourself with. Okay? The key word for calisthenics is volume. They should have called it volume aesthetics that's what it is your body weight is your body weight it doesn't change but you can change the volume you can challenge yourself with volume all right so that's all i have to say for now i'm going to get to work see you in the next video thanks bye